Hi, welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. My name is Vince Leo. I am the author of the film review website, Quipster.net. I've been doing film reviews since 1996. You can read all of them at my website, Quipster.net, Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R. Net. While you're there, I do encourage you to check out my other podcast that covers films of the 1980s. It is called Around the World in 80s Movies, and you can find that link at my website. Today, I'm going to be looking at a film that is a, it's a drama that's out there, and I suppose it is something that may get some awards consideration. It's called Dark Waters. It is a film starring Mark Ruffalo, a PG-13 rated film. It does have thematic content, some disturbing images, and strong language. The runtime is two hours and six minutes. Anne Hathaway, Tim Robbins, Bill Camp, Victor Garber, and Bill Pullman are also in the film. The director is Todd Haynes, and the screenplay credited to Matthew Michael Carnahan and Mario Correa. The Dark Waters is a film that is based on a true story, and that true story is about this corporate lawyer who ends up taking on a big corporation, DuPont Chemical, and the origin of the screenplay came from uh, this Nathaniel Rich expose on attorney Rob Billet that was published in the New York Times Magazine in January of 2016. That article was entitled The Lawyer Who Became DuPont's Worst Nightmare. So I guess from that, you can imagine where this is going to go as far as the film. This is a story about a crusading corporate attorney who ends up going back to his hometown to take on the polluters who were destroying it. Obviously, DuPont being the polluters in this film. Mark Ruffalo, he's an actor. He's also an environmental activist. He read this article and he thought it would make for a compelling movie. He optioned the rights and he serves as a producer for the project. Well, Mark Ruffalo, who has a connection with biopics surrounding the DuPont family. He played the older brother in Foxcatcher that came out in 2014. He ended up approaching Todd Haynes, the director, with a rough draft script from Matthew Michael Carnahan. That was back in 2017. He hoped that Todd Haynes would direct the film. Haynes was stunned by the story. He actually was very compelled, but he was unsure that he was the right fit for it at that time, and he only had a small window of availability for Ruffalo to get the film made before... He was due for his next project, and really, Haynes could not give the time necessary at that point to make it a viable effort. Haynes is a very well-respected auteur of films. He is kind of an odd choice for this material. If you look at his body of work, his experience in films has historically been on a decidedly different path. But after a year more had passed and Ruffalo came back to ask again, Haynes ended up reconsidering and he ended up taking on the project. He did feel that it was timely and essential given the current political environment of valuing profits over people's personal health. So when Ruffalo and Haynes got together, they felt that the story could actually use a little bit more depth to make things additionally compelling beyond just the essentials of the main story. Carnahan, the screenwriter, had already moved on to write, and actually he would direct his next project, and he became unavailable. So Todd Haynes brought in another screenwriter called Mario Correa. He had not worked with him before, but had heard good things and read some good things. He wanted him to make some significant revisions to the script that he and Ruffalo had. So Ruffalo, Haynes, and Correa ended up wanting to fill in some of the blanks in the story. They went out to meet many of the people who were affected by the case in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and also in Cincinnati, Ohio. In meeting Billet and his wife Sarah, the real Billet, in their home in Cincinnati, they discovered that he had an overwhelming sense of fear, of loneliness, and of a lot of detriment to his overall marriage, all of which made it a hardship for him to continue in his case with DuPont beyond the uncertainty of prevailing. The people of Parkersburg, West Virginia, that involved themselves, they were willing to fill in more of those blanks. They became advisors to Dark Waters and its story development, and some Parkersburg residents, in fact, played extras within the film, and that included scenes in which the actors portraying them were actually in the same scene as those extras. In hearing the stories of the residents of Parkersburg firsthand, the filmmakers decided that there was more of a human element to the case than the initial draft script was not covering, and they began to do some revisions to emphasize a much more personal story instead of it just being seeking money from a polluter. You know, this wasn't just a health cost to a town, but it was also a personal toll to the man who made helping the people of Parkersburg his life's crusade at that point. 
DuPont, the corporation, was asked to participate in the film as well, but still, they, of course, declined. So the filmmakers ended up relying on public records and documents that the Parkersburg citizens had in their possession and also their eyewitness accounts that ended up representing DuPont's viewpoint in absentia. And like so many other corporations, DuPont tries to abide by some form of self-regulation. However, you know, when you have money coming in by the billions... The desire to stop the gravy train just because there might be some people that could and possibly be poisoned and some of those may actually be working for them and also their families began to wane in favor of running up as much profit as possible until somebody makes you stop, I guess. Billet's crusade against DuPont really is not a natural adaptation to the screen. The details of the case span decades. It starts off in 1998 and then we end up proceeding forward for the following 15 years or so. It also is not one where a victory against DuPont would lend to a feel-good ending because of the nature of this case. It's hard to rejoice while you're watching someone dying of cancer that they received a monetary settlement for a couple of million dollars where they're not going to be able to actually enjoy it against this company that is still making billions on the very chemicals that are making them sick. In its way, Dark Waters, it's kind of like Billet himself. It's not trying for Flash or grandstanding, but it's willing to do all of the seemingly thankless grunt work necessary to make sure the job gets done efficiently and to help those who need someone to give them a voice. Mark Ruffalo gives a deliberately dry and restrained performance as Rob Billet, the attorney working for a successful and conservative-minded Cincinnati-based firm of corporate lawyers. Every step of the way smacks of reluctance that ends up holding Billet back, but a stronger conscience drives him forward. He has skills for protecting corporations, but they're put to the test after this cattle farmer from his small hometown in West Virginia ends up approaching him one day. The farmer employs him to look into why his livestock is diseased and their offspring born with severe congenital disabilities. Also, he and his family might be getting cancer due to their exposure to what was going on there as well. The farm happens to be near where the biggest employer in the area, DuPont, has been dumping their chemicals, and he feels that they've polluted the nearby waterways and has caused a lot of harm to those cattle and also to the people exposed to the runoff. So Billet and his firm, they would typically defend a corporation like DuPont in this instance, but because this case is hitting close to home for Billet, literally here, his hometown of Parkersburg, West Virginia, he ends up being more intrigued. And what's worse, Billet discovers, is that the product that DuPont has dumped that is making Parkersburg sick is unregulated by the EPA. This is something that was not on the list of banned chemicals. So they end up making cookware with that chemical that might actually be doing its damage. Also to the rest of the world who are ingesting traces of it every day, the cookware that they use is coated with it. And that chemical was used to make the wildly popular nonstick substance known as Teflon. Now, Dark Waters falls under the subgenre of other whistleblower films. You think of Silkwood, The Insider, Aaron Brockovich. The closer to the truth getting out, the more the stranglehold is placed on the person who's doing the sniffing around by those with power. The story is very similar in form to those told before. And But, you know, these stories continue to come out. And that's primarily because, I guess, a lot of people still haven't got the message, and especially those corporations. And in this film... You know, many of the victims are not on Billet's side against taking on this Goliath that is actually doing them harm. The people of the town who are the victims of the purported poisoning are willing to take the risk with their own lives because they depend on those very jobs that DuPont is offering them. And, you know, because they need to keep putting food on their tables for themselves and their families. So the more connections Billet ends up making, the more isolated he ends up feeling Even his sympathetic boss named Tom Turp, who's played here by Tim Robbins, and his wife Sarah, played by Anne Hathaway, they're beginning to feel a certain trepidation as this creeps forward more and more. They question Billet's financial and emotional and physical tolls because he's continuing on this crusade that he's been on for years and years and only salary cuts and he ends up having a mild stroke and His dysfunctional home life ends up growing because of his effort. And ultimately, by the end of the film, Billet's not even able to do anything on his own. He awaits helplessly the results of scientific data that's either going to make or break his entire case. This anticipation and this agony of not knowing the effects go on for years. Despite the fact that there are many other stories that are of a similar vein, I suppose, that have come out 
in the past few decades, Todd Haynes' unique background in filmmaking is what ultimately makes Dark Waters compelling. He concentrates much more on Rob Billet's personal story and those obstacles that he encounters than he does on the details of the case against DuPont. And although the film could have adhered to being just a courtroom drama formula, and it would have probably been successful in that vein, Haynes here brings his penchant for actually delving into the nooks and crannies, the ways that class differentials and societal connections and those dynamics within a committed relationship come into play as the significant role in the behavior of the individual characters. Haynes here is also interested in how things are put together to form a complete picture, which is one of the reasons that he counts all the president's men among his favorite films. We all know where the story is going to go in the end, and yet it's the journey to get to that place where all the chips fall that becomes much more interesting. It's not the winning or losing at the end, whether it's important in Haynes' film here. It's the changes that are made in his protagonist, in his family, in this community, in business, and in the laws of the country. The people are small. The monetary compensation is also small. But the footprint that all of this leaves behind is enormous. In addition to the real-life struggles of individuals, Dark Waters also proves relevant given how the current political and social climate of the United States has grown more toward supporting corporations and in creating jobs over regulations to help protect the environment or to foster greater human health. The film also explores the nature of how corporations seem to hold all of the best cards when it comes to court cases against them. They end up racking up a lot of dollars, those dollars that they end up using to pay for all of the best lawyers, and those lawyers know how to stall and to delay, to deflect, and even to intimidate to scare off some of those plaintiffs that make it seem like pursuing them is really not worth their while in the end. And and meanwhile, those people suffering and seeking retribution end up getting shunned, sometimes bullied by their own communities who see the company as providing jobs and money to them and their neighbors. They see the corporation as the beneficial one. The people who are suing them are trying to take away those jobs, despite the fact that they too may find themselves in the same boat one day. Now, this this is a story that I think is worth telling in this day and age. You have environmental and corporate regulations that are being rescinded daily in favor of putting more power in companies to, I guess, self-regulate at best. And yet there is this detached nature to Dark Waters that keeps it, I think, from going from a good film to a truly great one because... The tempo here is not really able to settle into a defined groove. Instead, it sometimes lingers long on moments that don't really drive forward the story in a very engaging way. It ends up skipping ahead to moments that feel like they're abbreviated, and it rushes through some exposition to get to the intimate scenes where the actors have a couple of dramatic moments. There are two concurrent storylines here that are competing for screen time and her attention. you got the court case itself and all of the details involved in how that's put together. And then you also have this personal drama of the soul-sucking nature of putting career and family on the line to pursue that court case. And while both, I think, are worthy of exploration, I think it's that shift in focus between the two aspects that results in this film that is very fascinating in its content, but it's kind of distracting in the way that it's put together in its form. The cast is full of excellent actors. They don't entirely build on each other. Anne Hathaway, in particular, gives an objectively good performance, but her presence here and her demeanor seem a bit out of sorts with the different types of tones and pieces of the film's ultimate progression. There are also moments here where the characters feel a sense of paranoia on their own. It's unknown if it's just their imagination. We presume it probably is. Billet sees a shadowy figure in a parking lot and grows nervous and he runs to his car and he stalls because he's going to turn the key in his ignition thinking, you know, maybe somebody planted a bomb in his car. And There's a concerned citizen who ends up helping the lawsuit who sees an abandoned house burned down that the family owns across the street and because they have the same last name realizes that it may have been intentional and mistakenly meant for their own home. These kinds of events up the tension and the fear of retribution from this multi-billion dollar corporation. They may have been palpable to the people who were doing the lawsuits at the time. 
But within the course of the story, other than the fact that it instills a sense of fear in the people who are trying to take on the corporation, it does come across as manufactured drama otherwise in a film that plays things pretty straight. Todd Haynes here, he said that this is a story that he wanted to get out there in a hurry before the election year. He wants it to be presumably a warning to voters that the current way that the government is going is going to only reap more of what we see in this film. However, it's the fact that this story does rush. It does feel a little slapdash at times that Dark Waters ends up slowing and speeding up sometimes in a manner that doesn't quite grip in those moments that it should. And then again, the nature of the real life case was also filled with starts and stops, I suppose. You know, the story has sparse moments of victory that ends up getting doled out over the course of two decades of research and waiting and waiting and waiting. And, you know, the subject matter does manage to feel weighty when it is delivered. And it's definitely substantive enough to change a few minds in the audience about how much we should allow chemical corporations to go on unchecked, especially when they're making products for our everyday home use. I mean, if we're consuming food using chemicals that have been untested or unknown or they're not regulated, it makes you think twice about what you're putting in your mouth. Now, by the end of the film, you come to realize that the scales of justice heavily do favor in our society the wealthy, and that it is vitally important for whistleblowers and those who seek to help everyday people who really can't afford to fight against the corporate titans, who pay a great deal of money in attorneys, and they actually pay money to politicians to make sure their interests end up prevailing. And while the prolonged battle is costly, this film brings to the forefront the notion of the importance of holding corporations accountable for their pollution and their waste. Profits should not come above the health and safety of communities and employees who seek to help keep these companies profitable. You know, if there's a message in the end that you take away, it's that we have to keep from growing cynical or feeling like we can't make a difference because we, the citizens, have the power to change ourselves, our communities, our countries, or our worlds if we can band together, all together, to fight for what's right against just people who are out to make money. So for all of that, I do think that Dark Waters is successful. I do have some gripes in terms of the way that the storytelling gets murky here and there, but ultimately I do think it's successful in getting that message across, and that's enough for me to give it three stars out of four. Three stars on my scale means that I do think that Dark Waters is worthwhile for those people who like this kind of movie. If you like your dramas, especially ones that feel socially relevant, you definitely are going to get all of that here. It does deliver on that front. So good performances here. Any timely story ultimately make it a worthwhile experience for most. So three stars out of four is what I'll give Dark Waters. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you have your own thoughts on Dark Waters that I did not cover in this review, you can write to me and let me know what you think. My contact information is at my website. You can go to quipster.net for all the details. Links to my Twitter feed, Facebook page, and Instagram are there as well. Quipster.net, Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net. Until next time, thanks everyone for listening, and please enjoy your time anytime you get to go to the movies. Music